somewhere pretty damn special I'm gonna show you around I'm back in Snowdonia and of course just looking at this you can tell where I am I'm in to Norway Slate Quarry You've been here before you probably recognize it you can probably tell by the the slag heap just up behind me here i've come to uh, uh come back to dinorwick slate quarry near clamberis right on the border of, of snowdonia national park um a fantastic place to shoot in any weather bright blue skies um uh, hot, even in harsh light, uh, days where it's raining, where it's wet and windy, uh, where it's snowing, where it's misty, there's always something to shoot here. Uh, you've just got to change uh, your perspective on on what it is you're, you've come here to shoot. You see a lot of photographs Photographers um, have come here over the last uh, 12 to 18 months. Um, I've been coming here now for three years and documenting um, this magnificent uh, landscape here. It changes constantly. Where there were roofs on old buildings three years ago, they've now collapsed. Walls have collapsed, stairways have collapsed. Um, it's constantly changing. Um, it's always a, a voyage of discovery, as it were. Um, but yeah. Uh, I've come here, I'm going to show you around uh, De Norwick, show you some of the photographic possibilities um, and uh, yeah, we'll go and uh, take it from there. I'm at um, what's generally called the bus stop car park uh, because there is a bus stop here, but this is the main, gen well generally the main entrance and uh, there goes one of the, uh, one of the types of people who, who uh, really um, uh, use this place a lot which which are climbers there's a lot of climbing routes here it's used extensively um, by climbing clubs uh, for, for for rock climbing anyway um, in recent times it's become more popular with photographers as well um, but anyway there is uh, this is the main uh, generally the main entrance into uh, the quarry there's about five or six uh, different ways of getting in but this is the, the the main one at the bus stop car park um overlooking clin um anyway right let's go and see what we can find i'll show you about often bypassed uh, by other uh, photographers. Um, about 100 meters up that path from the bus stop 
uh, car park. There's uh, a small opening in the, in the slate wall where a gate used to be. Um, if you go through that, it's on the left-hand side, uh, you, come into, you come into a lovely clearing um, where there's trees, there's bushes, a few trees have actually come down uh, in, uh, as a result of the wet winter we've had and you have to climb over one, unfortunately. Um, and it was a really nice tree as well. Uh, there was a, a nice little pathway under it and, um, and the tree overhung it and it was a nice little composition. Um, but yeah, you come into... Um, this little clearing, we've got these trees. It's great in autumn when the trees are starting to turn. Um, there's red berries on some of the trees. You get, you get nice yellow leaves, etc. Uh, and the bracken uh, turns as well. Uh, in late August, if, uh, if the midges aren't going to um, annoy you, um, it's worth coming in here because there's, um, there's some heather in here and it's quite, uh, and you get the nice purple heather coming out. So it's worth visiting sort of uh, late summer uh, and, and autumn or in any time you get any misty conditions around here because there's some fabulous trees, really nice. Worth a stop, worth investigating. Anyway, let's keep on going, see what we can see. Uh, it's probably about a two to three hundred meter walk uh, until you get to um, the, the start of the quarry itself. Um, the first thing you come to is this uh, big long building here, which was I think was some kind of warehouse or uh, distribution shed um, for um, sorting the slate and, uh, and, and packing it up uh, for shipping. Um, it's not very interesting, it's not worth spending any time trying to photograph. There's also um, this building here, which I think was some kind of telegraph station, um, something along uh, those lines. Notice the sign there. Um, which says keep out danger unsafe structures it's worth paying attention to that as I was saying at the start of the vlog um, these structures have, have um, begun to well they've already been disintegrating but they've been they dis disintegrated crumbled away um, even more in the short time that I've been coming here this place closed in 1963 I think so um, you know we're talking over 50 years uh, 55 years since uh, since this place was last in operation um, and they're rapidly uh, rapidly um, decaying so um, if you're if you're in any doubt do not enter any of the buildings some of them are quite safe um, some of them aren't and it's quite obvious the ones uh, that aren't Anyway, when you first get to this point, there's uh, three things you can do. So, just behind me, there we go, is that, there's a big viewing platform, which looks all the way down into Nant Paris and, uh, and uh, Clamberis uh, in the opposite direction. We'll go and have a quick look at that. Um, it's a one trick pony in terms of a shot from there. Um, once you've done it once, you don't really need to do it again unless the conditions are spectacular. Um, just gonna flip this around. There we go, right, so the other thing is, there's these three gates, that one, it's padlocked, big main one, don't go through there. There are these two gates here. Okay, the one on the left uh, takes you along the public footpath um, through the center of the quarry uh, and up to the upper levels, if you so wish. The one on the right takes you down on a path towards um, uh, Clan Barris. Um, now, today we're gonna go down the right path uh, and then I think tomorrow I'm going to uh, take you up um, uh, through, through the, uh, the left-hand gate. So, those are the three different ways. Now, a little bit of um, geography for you, I guess. And there are five, five main sections to the quarry that I would, uh, I would say were distinct. Um, the first one from the bus stop car park uh, is... Um, this one behind me which is Australia that's what it's called it's the biggest quarry pit uh, in the whole complex it's massive and that's where um, most of the photo opportunities um, are located I would say um, <clears throat> If you go down towards Clan Barris, down that path, uh, you come to Anglesey Barracks, which we're going to go to uh, in a minute. So um, there's a lower section uh, of the quarry complex, um, and that's number two. If you go further down and you get down to um, the lower car park, which is at the um, the, uh, the the 
Slate Museum, um, <clears throat> this Vivian quarry, uh, which is worth a you know it's worth a, a quick visit. There's one or two um, nice compositions that you can get there. Um, now, if you come back up to here and you go through that left-hand gate, that takes you to Australia. If you continue along the um, uh, the public right of way, you then get to the eastern side of the quarry. Um, and the photo opportunities aren't so great there, but there are some interesting sections. I'm not going to spend much time over there. Um, and then I guess the fifth the fifth location is up above um, Australia, uh, and. To get there, you access it from uh, the top car park, which um, not everyone knows about. Um, it only fits about four different cars um, in there, and it, but it's a short walk um, to some absolutely spectacular views. Uh, really good. So um, I'll probably show you uh, what you can get to uh, from that towards uh, the end of this uh, the end of this vlog. Anyway, right. So. We're going to go to Anglesey Barracks, so uh, when you get to those two gates you go through the right hand gate and you go down. Quite a view, eh? Um, so this is the view from the viewpoint uh, down to uh, Nant Paris and Klim Paris uh, just down here. Um, let's point that down, so that there is the uh, the entrance to uh, Electric Mountain. So uh, underneath uh, Elie de Vauer, uh, which is the mountain that um, uh, De Norwick is carved into, um, underneath there is a, a power station um, which uh, balances the, the national grid uh, when you all turn your kettles on at half time in the World Cup final. Um, so that's why you don't have blackouts. Uh, anyway, um, really, uh, really interesting going to uh, visit that if you're ever in the area and it's really wet and you don't want to be doing any photography. Um, you get uh, a bus, takes you from Clamberis, uh, from the Electric uh, uh, Mountain Visitors Centre, um, takes you right into the heart of the mountain. Really interesting where all the turbines are. Um, <clears throat> it's quite another interesting feature if you want to call it that now there are some tunnels uh, around here and then on uh, uh, if you go in them or on particularly windless days when you're actually in the quarry itself you'll hear a hum um, coming from the mountain and that's the generators um, uh, the turbines sorry uh, underneath uh, the mountain um, just uh, a reminder that it's a, it's a living, uh, working organism in some way, shape or form. There are people under you while you're taking photos. Anyway, this is a really great view. Um, it's a one-trick pony really, but um, it's best shot, um, I guess, uh, mid-winter when the sun's low on the horizon, uh, especially if you get some cloudage coming over. Um, Snowden uh, in the background there. Uh, well, actually, that's uh, Garnet Ugain. Um, Snowden's just visible um, at the, behind it. Um, you can just see the, the trig point poking out. Um, but uh, yeah, if you get some nice. Uh, um, nice clouds uh, rolling over the horns there or over Snowdon and uh, you get some strong sunlight coming in at a low angle you get some fantastic crepuscular rays coming down into the valley um, that's the best time to be taking a photo here you, you don't want to be taking a photo on a day like today um, in these uh, conditions of that kind of scene it's just not going to look particularly great anyway right let's go down to them barracks Well, I'm about halfway down to uh, Anglesey Barracks and there's opportunities for photos all the way down. Now this is quite nice, this little tree here. Um, and uh, it doesn't really stand out in winter except on like uh, cloudy days and you're going for something like black and white. Um, it's kind of standing out from the background uh, right now. Um, again in autumn when those leaves uh, turn, um, I have to be very quick because it's quite exposed and the leaves get blown off uh, pretty early. But it makes quite a nice, uh, quite a nice subject. It's not an image I'm going to take today. Um, 
it's uh, it's it's a little bit flat that foreground but um, oh bugger it I'm gonna take a photo it might be a load of rubbish we'll see yeah I've decided to take this shot uh, I don't know it might work it might not uh, I'm trying to get basically um, a portrait image of this section here so uh, I'm shooting at about 135 millimeters um, there's the image that I've got there f7.1 um, exposing a little bit uh, to the left ISO 100 um, not too worried about this uh, this bit down here being in focus it's slightly out but we're in focus from about there all the way through um, to the tree the, the um, the background is um, slightly out of focus. So, um, but I'm going to crop this to 5.4, which is my usual style. So I don't need to worry about this at the top, and uh, I don't need to worry about this at the bottom. I'll crop it in um, very slightly. Um, not entirely sure it's going to work as an image for me, um, but I do like the trees here and with the green leaves. It's not often I'm here uh, actually uh, in the spring and summer when uh, there are green leaves on the tree, so I guess it's a little bit different. But um, anyway, let's take a shot. And that doesn't look too bad actually. So uh, hopefully, um, with a bit of post processing, that's going to come out quite nicely. Barracks. Now I've just been doing some drone photography, uh, well videography actually, um, and I'm still learning how to use that bloody thing. Um, and I've never let the battery run down and I was flying underneath the trees and the battery, uh, I was getting the battery warning. I thought okay, I better return this to home in a sec. Anyway, it decided it wanted to do it automatically with a 10 second warning, didn't know how to cancel it. All of a sudden it just went up into the trees. How it missed the branches, I've got no idea. It must have missed them by centimeters. Heart stopping moment. Um, I did manage to cancel it, brought it back down, landed it safely uh, with about 17% left. But anyway, um, yeah, you learn something new every day. Uh, so Anglesey Barracks here. Now I've seen lots, lots of uh, photos from Anglesey Barracks and hardly any do them justice as far as I'm concerned. Um, there's one composition I really like. Uh, I first saw it by a guy, a guy did it called um, uh, Dave Fieldhouse. And so now I'm not one to really copy compositions. I've done one or two in my time. Um, but I've been to this location, I've scouted it, I've duck dive underneath the trees, um, really tried to get the optimal position. Um, and I think Dave almost, well, pretty much nailed it. So uh, I, I, I've taken a shot from this uh, location, which is almost identical. It's a shift pano. Um, <clears throat> And if you get it right, you can get the uh, you can get the the, the the barracks going off into the distance, and then over to the side here, um, you can get uh, uh, Garnadu Gain and uh, and the horns on Snowden um, away from the tree canopy. So it just creates a bit of space around it. Um, anyway, uh, I'm using my favourite lens, the 24 mm uh, Canon tilt, tilt shift. Um, just for the shift feature on this, I can't use tilt because uh, because if you try and use tilt, the top of the image, even though you'll get front to sharp backness, uh, back to front sharpness, sharpness, 
front to back sharpness um, using any of the uh, any of the um, uh, the apertures. Um, you know, the, the mountains will be in uh, sharp as a tack. Your foreground or your uh, the uh, the buildings down here will be sharp as a tack. But the top of the image and anything right at the bottom of the image will be out of focus because of the plane of focus that the, the, the tilt shift uh, uses. So um, yeah, you can't use the tilt uh, for this type of shot. So it's just a straight shot with a shift on it. Um, three shot shift panning. Uh, so anyway, there we go. Light's quite nice. Now, adjacent to Anglesey Barracks, just across the path, um, there's an area, there's a glade you can walk through. It's got some nice uh, uh, old buildings uh, just, down, uh, just down through here, which is quite nice. Now, at this time of day, at this time of year, the sun's pretty much gone um, down behind the hill. But from, from up here, and it's probably a good place to be um, on a winter's morning, something like that. Um, you get a nice aspect onto the, uh, the different levels of the quarry from here. Um, there's also, this coming around, Whoop. this building here. There's quite a nice image going on there and the light's quite nice. Um, there's a nice reflection off the side of the side of the building you can see there. So that might make a nice quaint type classic uh, photo. Um, but yeah, that's a nice area. There's some a few little compositions and things around here. Um, nothing of great interest, uh, great interest today. But the um, these the, the the quarry levels here are beginning to light up, getting some nice light. Uh, so it's probably worth getting the uh, the telephoto out um, and getting in on some of the details on the edge on each of those levels. There's buildings. There's uh, there's trees uh, which stand out against the background as well. So um, yeah, there's always something to do up here um, that isn't a big, a big wide view on a day like today where it's blue sky um, and not that interesting until very late on. Uh, yeah, focus on the details, get rid of the sky, keep the sky out of the composition um, on days like today, if you can. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think I might call it a day in a minute, go back to the van, um, crack open a tin of curry, Asda's finest smart price chicken curry and, uh, and some rice, something like that and then uh, we'll see what happens later on. Okay, so there's a little tip. Uh, if you do come down to um, the level that Anglesey Barracks is on now, you've actually got three options to head back to your vehicle at uh, the bus stop car park. Um, <clears throat> now, first option is uh, to head back up the incline that um, I came down earlier. Um, it's, it's quite a steep um, option that is. Um, an alternative is to go back to that. Um, is to go to that that clearing where the uh, the hut was, where I was a second ago. Um, follow. There's a bit of a path goes around and generally zigzags its way uh, back up to uh, up to the start. But I actually prefer coming back through. Um, Coming back through the barracks, uh, you come into some woodland. Um, if you turn left, the path goes down towards Clamberis. If you turn right, it starts going up through the woodland, which is rather a pleasant walk. It's uh, not too steep. It does have one or two steps here and there, but uh, overall it's slightly more uh, gentle. And um, eventually it branches off uh, to the right and uh, takes you back to the bus stop car park. So, uh, so there you go, little tip. I uh, prefer to come this way, plus you get a bit of nice woodland as well, as you can see behind me. 
very pleasant. Oh. 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 That walk up's a bit, uh, a bit more strenuous than I remember. Anyway, Monty's joined me, uh, and uh, you all right, Mont? Mont? Yeah, he's good. Um, so uh, I've got to go to the top car park uh, and just get sunset. There's a shot that I'm after, so uh, I'm going to show you the way. See you in a sec. Wow, what an evening. Beautiful. This is as good as I've had at Denorweg. I've had it once like this before, but I wasn't here. And I've been after this particular shot for quite some time. I must have come to Denorweg about 30 times over the last couple of years. And I've been all over, but this is a particular shot that I like because I like the, I like the foreground. And it's never worked until today. There's clouds above it. There's, there's a magic slot over on the horizon, it's just lit up. Oh, if you can see Monty, he's lit up too. And it's beautiful, I'm just taking a portrait image, strong foreground. I'm shooting again with my uh, 24 tilt shift. I've got a three stop ND grad on there and I'm polarizing because there is a lake down there um, which is uh, reflecting a little and this uh, and this piece of foreground is also quite bright and is reflecting so just taking the edge off that but wow Snowden is absolutely beautiful today fabulous I kind of wish I was up there but uh, I'm not complaining not at all anyway let's uh, let's get this shot in the bag Looking nice, looking nice. Check on the viewfinder. Oh! Boom! Woo! Come on! Yeah! Woo! Yes! Woohoo! Is that a good one, Monty? Is that a good one? Let's have a look. Tell me, is it good? It's a good shot, he says! Woo! Happy days! Finally, in the bag. <laughs> 